Hi, right, you're watching Matthew Morales, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let us start off by talking about how you can multiply numbers using a parabola. Take a second to pause the video and think about how you would answer the following question. So you can find the equations of lines that pass through points of the parabola individually, or you could find a generalized formula and then just plug in the points. So you start off by drawing an arbitrary line across a parabola and write down the standard equation of a line. Then using the coordinates negative a, a squared, and b, b squared, we solve for m, the slope of the line drawn. And with a little bit of algebraic simplification, we get that the slope is equal to b minus a. After plugging in for the slope we just solved, we plug in the coordinate b, b squared, and solve for the y-intercept of the line which yields c equals ab. Although insignificant right now, the y-intercept plays a critical role in our search for primes using a parabola. Talking about primes, let's move over to the sieve of Eratosthenes, which is an ancient method to find primes. n is prime, then we turn that cell blue. Similarly, if n is not prime, meaning positive, then we turn that cell red. So the rule to find primes is if we land on a cell that is not red, then it is prime. So we can mark 2 as prime, and then mark all the multiples of 2 red. Next, 3 is unmarked, so it is prime, and then we turn all the multiples of 3 red. Now 4 is red, so we skip over that and head to 5. And then we skip 6 because it is red and go to 7. Now after 10, we are going to display the multiples with a yellow highlight. Try to see if you can notice a pattern between them. As you already may be noticing, the multiples of all prime numbers greater than 10 have already been marked as composite, so in reality we actually only needed to list out the multiples of 2, 3, 5, and 7. This stems from a fact that searching for primes up to 100 and the square root of 100 is 10. Now that we know how to find primes numerically, let's see if we can convert that into a graphical method using a parabola. First, let's recall what we learned from the first part of the video. If you graph y equals x squared and select two points, negative a a squared and b b squared on the parabola, and draw a line between both points, then the y-intercept of that line is a multiplied by b. We know this because of the e standard equation of that line to be derived. If we combine our knowledge of how to multiply two numbers using a parabola with the method for finding primes using multiplication, we give birth to a new formula to find primes using a parabola. I encourage you to pause the video to think of what that will look like. So here are the rules for the prime sieve. First one is that no line should begin or end at y equals 1 because all numbers are divisible by 1 including primes. Additionally, once you draw out all multiples less than n and no line passes through y equals n, then n is a prime number. Using those two rules, we make the following graph. First, we list out all possible multiples within the range. Then 
to find primes, we look for integer points on the y-axis do not have any lines passing through them. This turns out to be a specific case of a more general pattern, but to discuss the pattern we need to know what the geometric mean is. And before we talk about the geometric mean, let's talk about the arithmetic mean. When we take the average of a set of numbers, what we are doing is finding a value that can be placed with each individual value while keeping the sum constant. In that manner, we can think of the geometric mean as the value that keeps the area constant when the geometric mean is replaced with each side length. To visually represent this, let's take a look at a rectangle. To find the formula for the geometric mean, we would have to solve for the side length of the square that has the same area as the rectangle. So we get that s is equal to the square root of the product of the width and height of the rectangle. This formula can be generalized as the function gm that takes in two inputs and spits out a number. Now let's go back and take a look at the parabola example from before. Upon some close observation, you might notice that the y-intercept is actually the geometric mean of the two y-coordinates used to draw the line. Now we can also talk about the geometric mean in three dimensions, but instead of rectangles and squares, we now talk about cuboids and cubes. Also, instead of area, we will have to consider volume. As we can see, the geometric mean for three dimensions takes the product of the three inputs and takes the cube root instead of the square root. Now let's see how this translates to the cubic function, y equals x cubed. The 3D geometric mean, of course, three numbers to be plugged in, so we are going to have a parabola intersect with the cubic function at three arbitrary points. This is because whenever we have three random points, the simplest possible graph will pass through all three is a parabola. We plug in the three known points and solve the system equations for the y-intercept, which happens to be the product of the x-coordinates of the points. take the geometric mean of the y-coordinates used to find the parabola, we get that the geometric mean is the y-intercept. And although we didn't prove this for every positive integer value of n, the y-intercept will be the geometric mean of the x-coordinates at which both graphs intersect. Here are some of the y-intercepts worked out. 